I mean, the fundamental director question for me is how does this make me feel? Can you be a TV director if you don't love story? Hmm. I don't think you could be much of a director if you don't love story because I think that's what the director is, is a storyteller. Uh, I guess people do get into it for different motivations. I mean, it's a glamour position. People, you know, the culture really, you know, lifts up people in the entertainment business. Uh, but I don't think there are too many successful directors who don't come at it with some sort of driving passion to tell stories, and in my case, to understand myself more. It's like I, I feel in, in finding my connection to stories, what moves me about them, what I want to see happen, I'm really exploring myself. I'm really having to look within to find out not what I'd like, how I'd like to be, but how I am, because I'm using myself always as the barometer I mean, the fundamental director question for me is how does this make me feel? That's something I, I, found, I realized in kind of deconstructing my process when I started mentoring young directors and speaking at festivals, which led ultimately to me writing this book, which I'll mention again oh, cool. at your suggestion, Directing Great Television Inside TV's New Golden Age. Um, and you just wrote that, sorry to interrupt, but 2021? Just an hour ago. I just, no, no, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I, always I, I took advantage of the pandemic because I had to suspend my directing career. And I had started the book uh, several months before, but uh, during the pandemic, I really just devoted myself full time to it. Um, but it's really the fundamental question is how does this make me feel in, in a variety of uh, circumstances? Like, you know, when I'm reading a story, I'm trying to find out when I'm reading a script for the first time. Uh, I'm trying to see how it, how it affects me and what, what detail or what storyline or what, what grabs me or what nags at me or what bothers me. You know, I'm trying because all of those things are pointers to something within me that has been evoked. And often it's things that it's most exciting for me when it leads to self-discovery. You know, it's not like, you know, I think, you know, if you do something the way it's done been done before, it's just kind of lifeless, you know, and what I'm always trying to find in any story and in any scene is the sense of life, some life happening, which is the first time. It's the illusion of first time, but, you know, I think when you get great actors or you create uh, a world, you know, uh, it's, it, it grabs the audience when you feel like it's really happening. So when I'm watching a scene, for example, in, re in rehearsal, it's like I'm watching it, I'll, I'll have ideas about what it's about, of course, but I like to see what the actors are going to bring, independent of what I think it's about at first. And I'm constantly asking, you know, how, how am I involved? Am I, you know, I, I monitor myself as I'm watching. Oh, that was exciting. Or, oh, I'm not very interested. And it's like that's what cues me to where work is needed or opens me. It's like if an actor does something that startles me and I see something in a whole new way, that's very exciting. And I want to then go into that and explore that. Why did that move me so much? And why, you know, and how, what other elements in the story maybe I missed? Oh, and there's other resonance. And oh my God, that came into focus. How that, that story, that th moment three scenes later was affected by that, you know? And so, so you know, that's all we really have is ourselves. So, uh, you know, if you don't have, I mean, I'm very grateful that, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to direct, not just because it's a great, job and it's so exhilarating to work with talented people and to and to find you know exhilaration in the feeling of life it also has taught me so much because often the things i want to see happen are things that uh lead me to to, to better understand why that is and it leads me to ultimately to knowing myself a little bit better you mentioned glamour previously um what would you say to those who want to do this for the money or the fame or power recognition? Uh, far be it for me to judge anybody for those motives. I mean, we all, I think, you know, tr if we're truthful, I think if most people are truthful, we're all motivated by many, many things. And it's, it's, it's far beyond my powers in, the, in this culture to be immune to any of those considerations. Of course, I want to be, you know, uh, well thought of and given status and all those things. The thing is, those can't be the most important thing. I think it's important, you know, if you become purist and think I can't have any of those motives, you're lying to yourself and you're going to be cut off, you know. 
part of my own, you know, I, uh, what I think is so important about having, frankly, a mindfulness practice, which I do. I've had a meditation practice for many years, but I think that that being mindful involves accepting, welcoming everything that arises within you and not trying to fix yourself or change yourself or make yourself conform to something. But, but in this job, in directing, you know, you can't lead with that. You can't lead with your ego. You can't lead with your desire for to be loved or, or, or adulated or anything else. You have to, how I think of it is the master we must serve is story. It's not our ego, it's story. That's what, to me, keeps me on focus. Those other things are there, you know. But I would hope, and I, you know, I would hope that if my desire to tell a, the best story conflicts somehow with, gee, but I really wanted to do that great 360-degree angle that would be so impressive and people would think of me like I'm Scorsese. But wait a minute, the scene isn't about a dizzying effect. It's about this. You know, I would hope, you know, I always hope I'm going to choose, you know, a serving story, which is also my theory. I have a ch chapter about the language of camera, which, you know, for so many people is, is a real challenge coming into directing that uh, if you have a literary background or, or, or a story background, you might not, you know, be conversant with how images work and how they work on people and all that. And, uh, you know, what has been my salvation there as my teacher there is again, asking how does this make me feel and what subjective state do I want to create in the viewer to best prepare them to experience the story. If it's, if it's a magnificent beauty shot because I want a romantic feeling, I'll do that. If, it's, if I want to contextualize a scene between two characters that they are small in comparison to this environment, I might do a magnificent, you know, put them small in the frame and see a beautiful vista shot. But if it's really more about What's this dynamic between these characters? My master may only just be edge to edge with two characters in it. But it's what, again, what story are you telling? Did you start your meditation practice before directing or the other way around? Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's see, I started, uh, no, I would say in earnest, I started it uh, after I started. I mean, I've been doing this for decades, so it's a long time. And, you know, I think we arrive at what we need as we go through life at different times. and. Often, in my experience has been that, you know, it's taken me often several decades to get to a place of having any kind of wisdom about anything at all. So, you know, I think uh, being able to just settle down and detach from who I take myself, who I took myself to be, who I continue to take myself to be, and understand that that's a structure, that's a construct, that whoever I really am is independent of, uh, of any structure. And that's, that's really one of the things I love about directing is it, an, it, it really requires me to be as present as possible. And to be as present as possible, I find, is to be willing to relinquish our ideas about ourselves, how we're perceived, how we perceive ourselves. You have to just let go of that and be open to what's right in front of you. And how did it help with the composites of shots or, or just the intuition about a scene? Because you've been quieting your mind now for several years. Oh, so I, my mind is not quiet. Oh, it's not quiet. I got to okay. say, you know, it's called a, pra <laughs> a meditation practice is called a practice because that's what it takes. I see. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, you know, and I want to say, I, I write this in the chapter on interstates. It's like, you know, far be it for me to say, I've never gone through a whole episode at all being completely in my center. And no, it's like, no, sure. there's stressors all the time. It's just that you need, it's so helpful to have the ability at some point to just kind of get in touch with, you know, the still center within to just kind of sink down and just what's really important, what's really here. And it's like, you know, sometimes that's all you need, a moment. But I'm, you know, I'm, my God, I'm as, as stressed and, and emotional and get, get hijacked by stuff all the time. But the practice just enables me to be a little more mindful, to catch myself a little more often. And when I'm directing, I have the great advantage of having a story I have to serve. So I, I don't feel, you know, I feel a, a responsibility and an obligation to get present and to put all that other stuff out of the way. 